Hi all, in the in second instructive game today, I want to ask you the question, how good your rule is? So what do I mean by this? I mean, how good is your strategy, your approach, your perspective of the game? You know, how did you arrive at your playing style? Are you attacking or defensive? Do you like tactical games or positional? So how good is your general, you know, philosophy on the game at the moment? Or do you try and take each game on its own merits, each position on its own merits, or do you try and develop a general style which you can you know, apply to different opponents and different positions. So, to demonstrate this question, I'm going to look at my fourth game against an IM in the British Championship. It was against Richard Pert, rated 2468. I thought I was having a really good game and I played c4 against him. This is the opening sequence where he snatched the pawn in the opening, but I didn't try and regain it immediately. I just played the calm knight f3, and when he protected it, all I did now was just try and develop my pieces to nice squares, and basically prepare as though I'm going to play bishop e3 and d5 later, trying to expose his knight on b6. So bishop e3, and already he just played knight d7, so he's moving pieces twice. Also, because he's played g6, he's got a point I can undermine later with h4 and h5. So, first though, I did try and regain the pawn now with bishop f1, and after knight b out, I was really happy with this position. I seem to have a very comfortable position here, and it's almost as if he's making me quite complacent that I can even go for an attack against his king. So after knight d6, bishop b3, he plays the b6, so he's trying to develop his queen's bishop, so at least this active diagonal. I play h4 going in for my attack, and after bishop a6, queen f3 was played. So he tries now to, to counter-attack in the centre, and I continue with my attack. And here, apparently the engines actually like um, black's position, but not the way he played it. He played actually here knight c2 check. Apparently f6 would be okay for black. But after knight c2, he found himself into quite, quite a lot of trouble now. I played king e2, not king d2 as the bulletin showed by the way. Slight mistake there in trans transcribing this game. After knight takes e3, queen takes, he played f6. And now after knight c6, he played a disastrous looking move, he played queen c7. And this gave me a tactical opportunity here. I wonder if you can spot it, I'll give you five seconds. I played knight d5, basically winning the e7 pawn, because if queen takes c6, then knight e7 check, forking king and queen. And I really thought it was all over now. After queen d7, I had reached this point of, you know, shock in this position, that, um, my dream h-file attack has occurred against his king, and not only that, I've knocked out one of his centre pawns, so I'm just the pawn up. So I take on g6, and now I play a rook to the 7th, another dream type move, hoping actually that you play the immediate queen g4 check. Let's have a look, the immediate queen g4 check, f3, I was going to answer this with just rook g1, because the queen's now protecting that rook on g1. So this would be brilliant, you know, attacking that g6 after. But actually, he played rook h8, which really shouldn't have worried me too much. Um, although, the principal concern was that now, if rook h1 and takes on h7, now this queen g4 check is really winning a pawn. However, I should have still gone in for this, because I've got this powerful rook on the 7th, this bishop is now pinned, so making his king safety a lot less than it appears. In fact, white can apparently smash through now with e5. So trying to tear open to get access to the black king, tear open some lines. And here now, if for example fe, knight takes e5, and it's pretty dire now for the black king, like this would demonstrate. So we're just winning the queen here. So e5, and say if knight f5, as a new variation, then taking i5, this check is harmless by the way, so king d1, g takes f5, e takes f, and we see that because of that bishop pin, you know, this is pretty lethal stuff. If queen, if rook e8, 
this is no good because knight e5 and then just winning the bishop and if he takes with his king then his king's just had it just um, queen e7 check is very strong here and this, this would be mate so basically all these variations are good even if um, the pawn is dropped on g3 even in this line so what happens here is quite difficult to understand though after um, he played rook h8 I kind of panicked because I didn't really want to give up this, this pawn to allow this check so I played a grossly inferior move instead of supporting my rook on the 7th I took on h8 and let him back in the game and eventually he won so basically I was made quite complacent if we rewind this where I won this pawn and the point of the game is basically this idea of complacency setting in that you know you've achieved all your ambitions and you know this this film no country for old men questions um, the the crazy assassin who's about to murder someone basically questions his victim you know saying if the rule brought you here of what use is the rule well here you know my, my strategy of trying to combine positional play and tactics seems to have worked out very well and I had this dream position so you know I thought how can I go wrong I thought my judgment was correct to just exchange off rooks and play for a tactical move here of Queen f3 trying to fork Queen and King but it all actually backfired here because as well as getting out of this fork of Queen and King he played Queen e6 and all of a sudden he's threatening c3 check and my King's in trouble here and the game wasn't very sort of pleasant after this so after Queen e6 e5 and we have the bulletin with the mistake with the king on d2 so let's imagine the king's on, on e2 still c3 check because the king was on e2 king e1 and after the queen takes a2 I was still in a winning position believe it or not potentially after e takes d6 the way he played it was again inaccurate he played coming up to the time control rook h1 a seemingly fantastic rook decoy because after queen takes he has queen e6 but after knight e5 check f takes e5 I still have a clearly winning position if I played the most clinical and accurate move exploiting my new strategic trump in the position which is this pawn on d6 which can potentially get into a queen if I played the move queen d5 here so the threat is now d7 just queening that pawn so for example ed takes king takes b takes c3 would be very good so I'll just be the exchange up here he dare not take d takes c3 because of d7 and you know if he's not careful here in this position um, say he um, plays c2 as a new variation then d7 so just offering my rook because now what is black doing against this threat of the queen promoting there's no defense against that pawn so again though I blundered in this position I played queen f3 and really let him off the hook and the rest of the game was a bit of a nightmare after this because he had um, the ability now to munch my knight and get this technically winning endgame position which he converted after a hundred moves so um, basically though let's look at the position where I became complacent in if we rewind to um, the position where I just played this knight d5 so I just won a pawn for nothing it seems had my dream h file and even a rook on the 7th but he played instead of the immediate queen g g4 my king was on e2 he played rook h8 and basically I took instead of supporting the rook so what can we learn from this basically you can get a really good position and think your strategy is really working well but you still have to play the position you can't rely on your previous strategies and this applies broadly in chess that even if you have a series of wins 
um, you don't become invincible. Kasparov wrote about this in his book, How Life Imitates Chess, that you know, he thought he became almost invincible, and then he lost to Kramnik in the Brain Games match. No one's invincible. It doesn't even matter if you get a seemingly crushing position. It doesn't show that um, your rule, your philosophy is, is correct, is, is ultimate. There's, there's no ultimate in chess, not even the strongest computers. They can still play moves which um, are incorrect or not as good as they could be because they don't have the strategic depth. They might have the tactics, but they, they might miss strategic plans. So no one's invincible, and no policy, no rule is invincible. And even if you reach a crushing position, you know, you still have to play uh, the most accurate moves. I hope you enjoyed that, uh, and there's something instructive here. Uh, please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.